Francis Galton was a Victorian polymath. He had a finger in every pie in the Victorian period. He was involved in science, geography, the Royal Geographical Society. He was involved in the Anthropological Institute. I mean, you name it, scientifically speaking, Galton was involved in it in the 19th century. Who was Francis Galton? Francis Galton was a madman. He was a Victorian eccentric who did all kinds of things that we now count as science. On the one hand, he is celebrated, although some people would say not celebrated enough, for being this great Victorian polymath. Part of the problems that some of us might have with him was the fact that he was a racist and that this contributed to his thinking about the world in biological terms. He tends to be um, overshadowed by one aspect of his work, which is eugenics. We've got a few examples of the things that Galton actually said, the more racist aspects of his work, because he was very public about them, wrote letters to editors such as the Times. His argument was that the Chinese would go and they were very good at breeding and they would eventually outpopulate the lazy Africans and thus make Africa a far more um, industrious place. He tends to be overshadowed by that, but his legacy is also with us as a scientist, as somebody who is trying to think about things in a different way. Galton was working at a time when the idea of being a professional scientist was being laid down. And the kinds of work that he did really helped define the modern scientist. So yeah, not only is Francis Galton a scientist, but he sets the rules for how to count scientists. One of Galton's renowned achievements, um, and that's still with us today, is um, creating fingerprinting kits and working on the fact that everybody has different prints and how to um, identify individual prints. Galton really wasn't important for building big theories. What Galton really was important for was collecting the data, crunching the data, and finding patterns. So these are Francis Galton's counting gloves. He designed them specially so he could walk around taking, basically counting things or people he noticed surreptitiously without people um, realizing what he was up to. So he had a piece of paper in here that he could prick with this pin. Francis Galton's legacy for UCL is a couple different things, but most importantly, he's a Victorian eccentric, and we love stories about eccentric Victorian men. On one hand, I admire him for the amount of work he did and the fact that he was somebody who promoted other people and he was very good at getting his ideas out there and support for them. I find the racist aspects of his work very very difficult to think about and to deal with and I'm interested in aspects of the early Victorian anti-racist community who sort of had to deal with Galton and, and challenge the kind of work that he came up with. He was somebody who didn't really understand or apply the human cost to some of the things that he said. So I think actually he probably would be as horrified as we are at say the Holocaust or medical experimentation. Galton teaches us how to be a scientist and, and what kind of what kind of work is involved in science, that, that hard graph that day after day after day, working with the most boring material in the world, but trying to put it together to find a pattern. And that's, that kind of work is underappreciated. What is Galton's legacy? It, he teaches us that hard work can pay off.